Hey everyone, John Henry here, Slingshot Futures Trading Group. Thanks for joining me in today's video. Before we start, take a second to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and make sure to click the notification bell icon so you don't miss the next live stream right here on YouTube every afternoon at 1530 Eastern Time. Also, don't forget your free morning brief waiting for you at ssftg.com slash brief. That way you can be sure you're loaded up with the major levels of interest for the day as well as some charts and things to get you going on the right foot. Maybe you're looking to get filled in ahead of time with a video-based game plan every morning, every week, every month. Then you can take a look at the join button below the video to gain access to our SSFTG briefings. And if you want to get into the action, you can check out the live analysis rooms for the New York Stock Exchange Open. Also, don't forget about our Thanksgiving pie sale. If you haven't seen this yet, you've got a few more hours to take advantage of it. Today is the last day uh, while of that sale going on, and that's going to take off a massive 31.4% discount. you got to love that Thanksgiving pie uh, and everything we have to offer. So keep in mind that's valid until the end of the day. Uh, so make sure you don't miss your chance to join. So the topic for today is, of course, our candle by candle psychology and analysis. And right out of the gates, I'm zoomed way out here because this is a this is a pretty big gap. Uh, if we look at the overall movement here from an RTH perspective, the candle's opening way up here. Uh, well, the last level of resistance that we had was here and a little bit here and maybe some rising resistance uh, or maybe some wider right rising resistance. This this gapped above all of it, right? There's nothing left after that. Uh, so with such a huge gap to the upside, a lot of traders are going to be thinking, whoa, wait a minute, you know, like what? everything that was in the way that buyers were looking to take profit at, well, it just got through all of those. So obviously right at the start, we're probably going to see some selling, buyers taking profit. Uh, that would make sense given what we saw at the end of the day yesterday with that big volume reversal right back up. They're, they're kind of opening up today with a, a big old, big, you know, big happy birthday cake, right? With a ton of frosting on top. Everyone's real happy when you're opening up if you're long going into a giant gap higher above all of that resistance. So there's definitely going to be some profit taking. And that's what we see on the first candle of the day is that bear bar. Now they followed it up with bullishness almost immediately. It snapped right back up and jumped back up to the highs, creating uh, basically an equal candle, right? The bull bar is a little bit bigger body, but aside from that, it's the same size. So the first day uh, or the first couple candles of the day really hasn't created much interest. If we look at it with candle math in perspective, we've got the open, we've got the low, right? But it ended up closing up here. So your candle would look like this. The body would be here. It'd be a big wick on the bottom and a small little wick on the top. That's a very bullish bar. So that big reversal that came back in again is showing some serious conviction from the bull side looking for more upswing potential. And given that it's gapped above all of the other levels of resistance, it wouldn't be a surprise at all to see it carry through a little bit further. They get more bullish continuation to the upside. And this is where, let me uh, scrunch the uh, the chart up a little bit here so I can see what's going on. Gap was too big. There we go. All right. So we get the second candle of the day, and it's a strong bull bar. They're following through. They're closing above the highs. Uh, everything is, I mean, it looks like, just trying to break out buyers are getting the pop above the highs uh it's it's this really kind of interesting reversal off of that that morning that morning drop and now we're seeing more signs of bullishness coming in so if buyers weren't already interested on that kind of morning reversal this is gaining more confidence for them to try to continue the push back up we get another pop higher and I mean, realistically, it, it didn't look that great, right? That's a really gross looking candle and we did see an increase in volume, uh, but not much realistically, not a whole lot really changed. Now it, it is a little bit skewed because of <laughs> that crazy volume candle that happened over there. So if we bring this up just a little bit, there we go. We'll bring it back into realistic territory. Uh, we can see that it did increase a bit, right? So there's some profit taking going on here. Buyers are continuing to take profit with a move up. It makes a lot of sense to see uh, a bit of a rejection up here. So when we're getting this pullback, buyers aren't necessarily out, but they're looking to buy cheaper. They don't want to buy way up here. Uh, maybe buying below the previous bull bar, buying you know a weak close, buying a dip, buying something, just not way up at the top. 
and we get the continuation to the upside and it starts hitting 64.24 and that is a level from the morning brief uh, where it creates a zone of resistance. And once we start hitting these areas, this is a zone where my, my aggression on the buying gas pedal lays off a little bit. If the buyers are going to get above this, then they're they're going to have to get above this. This is not showing anything good. Now, the one good caveat here is that we have lower volume and it does have a rejection on the top. So for bulls, from their perspective, uh, this is showing some good signs of potential continuation. Let me switch the snap mode here. Uh, kind of like a spike in channel right over the last few candles here so we've got that nice little spike and channel continuation movement going on and we're right at the top so obviously i don't want to be a buyer way up here regardless i would rather buy low right buying below the previous candle buying the dips that kind of stuff we get a dip below the previous bull bar and it gets snapped right back up again. Now it's interesting because it dipped below that bull bar and you'd think with such a big rejection you'd have an increase in volume, but it really didn't go up by much. And that's a little bit of a concern, right? If if the buyers are so strong, then why, why didn't the volume go up? There's some nervousness here. Uh, we're not seeing that volume kicking up yet. And then they followed through. So with a big blow off on the highs, we didn't see any buyers necessarily picking up aggressively on the pullback, but we are still seeing some profit taking going on as it increases into the highs. This is some of the biggest volume that we've seen. It over it overshadows the, the last, what, four or five candles. Uh, so it's a good chunk of volume and we're breaking above a major level of resistance. We're seeing some profit taking. It wouldn't be a surprise at all when we're having a break above it to see them dip back and then find support off of that 64 four quarter for continuation uh, and a lot of times what you'll end up seeing is this becomes a pinnacle point if we get a candle that closes back down again then you're looking at it from a resistance standpoint right that's the breakdown point uh, so we got to kind of see what they're going to do here this could very easily reverse uh, especially with that increasing volume so we need a bit more info and we get another continuation to the upside, an increasing volume, obviously. Uh, we've got that big wick on the bottom and a big wick on the top, and it looks as though they got that pullback, right? We got the breakout above, pullback, continuation. Uh, and so buyers did buy into it, but we also saw some profit taking. We're coming into a little bit more of a balance here. It's not really breaking out much higher, but it's not really breaking out lower either. Uh, one nice thing that the buyers do have is there is a bit of candle gapping going on here. So if we look between the high of that bear bar to the low of the bull bar, they are showing a little bit of excess bullishness here. Buyers may be looking to ramp up a little bit more uh, as long as these objectives remain open. <laughs> and we get this little bitty bear bar uh this teeny tiny bear bar this is something that a lot of traders will trade off of just due to risk reward uh buyers will buy above it sellers will sell below it obviously this is a bullish move so better for buyers to buy below it and buy above it uh there's a there's definitely context that comes into play but the risk is so small uh because realistically if you're buying here your stop is here right or maybe a couple ticks down but your reward could potentially be three four five to one it's huge uh and a lot of traders will take it just because of that uh, so I, for me personally, I would rather buy underneath this candle, just like we were talking about back here, because this is still forcing you to buy very high. We're not really pulling back a whole lot and it breaks out above the highs with a big giant bull bar. Now notice big bull move into the highs volume increases, but it's lower than the last time. So we're now starting to see traders not hitting the hitting the brakes too fast. They're letting the runners run a little bit further than they were before. Uh, now we're seeing a bit more potential strength. Buyers are looking for a little bit more in the move here. We get another new high and increasing volume again. Uh, volume increases back up to where it was before and we're seeing more profit taking. Bull bars are still closing very strong. Uh, and from a candle gap perspective, again, we've got another gap right there. So there's still more continuation potential to the upside. A lot of buyers are going to be buying into this pullback with the assumption that it's gonna go back higher at some point later today uh, if it pulls back now. And if it keeps on going, then well, <laughs> it's kind of job done already, right? It just keeps on going. So buyers will be looking for pullbacks. It still hasn't pulled back, right? It, I mean, it got below a previous bull bar once, but we haven't even broken below two. So it just, it, it's, it's overextended. It's forcing you to either buy high or sit on the sidelines until it gives you something better to work with. 
heavy bear bar to the downside and there's no volume. That's not a good sign from the bullish perspective. Buyers who want to buy this, they're going to have to struggle against the fact that nobody's backing them up. There's no volume while the market's moving lower. That's indicative more of profit taking and a pullback actually may be happening soon, right? Uh, now that doesn't mean that buyers are disinterested. They're going to be buying the whole way down. Uh, because again, the likelihood of it going back to the highs is well, very high. Uh, but depending on how far this pulls back, a lot of traders are going to be looking at previous swings, the previous candle lows, the moving average, which is slowly starting to catch up now, maybe even back to that 64 quarter area, anywhere around a pullback, just something a little bit more than one candle. That's all it's given so far. Uh, so maybe two, <laughs> maybe we can go with two. We get the second bear bar to the downside. Now we're seeing volume picking up a little bit, but nowhere near any type of decisive volume at all. Uh, nobody's really doing anything yet. It seems like people are kind of staying out of the way. Those are two really heavy bear bars down. Uh, so typically when you've got that, that type of stacking, it's one of two things. It's going to reverse quickly because buyers snap it up on a fire sale, or it's going to continue driving lower. If it's going to continue driving lower, we've got those support zones all over the place around 64 and lower uh, down to the moving average. If it goes higher, then we've got resistance back at the highs, but that's about it. So still, you know, I don't, I don't know about you. I'm not a big fan of juggling knives and this big bear bar uh, that doesn't make me feel too great uh, as far as how this aggression is going. Sellers seem like they've got a bit more in the tank yet. And they do. Uh, bears get a little more follow through through the bottom and they crack right through 64.24. Right now, again, it's the same thing that we were talking about on the highs. Anytime we're breaking above a level, I need confirmation. Get above it and keep going right now just because it's breaking below this level of support doesn't mean it's invalid the market could quickly snap right back up again and that would be a sign of bullish rejection uh, but there are a few clues we've got some big candle gapping to the downside now that's going to create a problem for buyers because they know sellers have open objectives so as long as the seller's objectives to the downside remain open which at the moment would put targets about right here right at the swing low wow uh so right at the major swing low down here and that's a, where i mean that's the candle gap target that's the major objective and not many buyers are going to want to stand in the way of that until those sellers have their objectives done really good reversal so a great example of a twin reversal where the market breaks down and then snaps right back up again that's a strong sign of bullish potential now i say bullish potential because even though it looks strong it created gapping. It still has bearish gapping in it. That's the really, really strong bull bar, but the bears still have context. And that's the big clue here. Uh, sellers are still looking for the leg to the downside. They're still looking for that it, at least 59 quarter. That was the, uh, the initial target off the candle gap. And we're bouncing off support. So buyers are obviously buying here, but realistically, the sellers are still showing strength and we're getting higher prices. We're not getting any increase in volume. So the, the signs are good for the bulls, but that little bit of excess strength from the sellers is going to make them nervous. And as it should have, it, it did make them nervous and we back off back down to a quick new low. The candle gapping is still open, but now with this move down, remember the objective was at least down to the bottom here, which it got. Uh, now the next gap beyond that, it might be a little bit wider. Let's see here. No, the next gap's target was just a tick ahead of it at 59.75. So that whole move down, that completed two major candle gaps. That's a huge objective. And what's interesting is we're not seeing the volume go up. If that's such a huge objective and the sellers are finally out of the way, then uh, where, where are the buyers, right? Uh, we're getting a lot of wicking going on down here. That's a good sign. That was also the last time the market was here uh, was a huge amount of rejection. So this is obviously a zone of interest, but why isn't the volume reflecting it, right? It's getting a little bit later in the afternoon. Maybe lunchtime's coming a bit early, but that is, it is kind of the back of your mind. Like, well, where is everybody? 
little baby inside bull bar. Now in the context, just like we talked about this bear bar up here with buyers and sellers looking for breakouts, etc., we have a similar situation with an inside bear bar. Uh, I'm sorry, inside bull bar. Buyers will buy above this knowing that it would be a break back above the highs and kind of breaking down outside of this bear trend. We're kind of invalidating it. Uh, and along with that, we've got really strong support. So a stop underneath the lows realistically there's there's nothing really saying that that shouldn't work all of the signs are pointing to if this starts breaking down then it might have some problems so buyers will buy assuming low probability but a massive reward potential back up to the highs uh, so buyers above this and not really anything below it maybe buyers underneath it again for that double bottom sellers taking profit new buyers underneath a low moving average is starting to get closer right a lot of things are still kind of perking up and that might be why we're not seeing that increase in volume yet. Another really nice bull bar, and now we're starting to go into 11 o'clock, so there's not much left here for the morning session, but they're trying to break out higher, and notice they're failing to close above that 64.24. They need to get above that. We have a huge rejection coming in from the bottom, and that added more to it, another to the tick bounce off that low. So it's a great sign. It's also, from the highs, one Two, right it's an inside second long technically speaking the second long fires off above this candle that hasn't happened yet so we're still kind of waiting for this funky weird ish sort of second long type formation to continue up and the volume isn't reflecting anybody doing anything yet because well realistically it just hasn't pulled back far enough long enough and we get a big breakout. So buyers take that second long and they rip it above the highs. Whether they bought it above the double inside bar, they bought it above the big bear bar, whatever. Uh, we've got some really good continuation up. And there's not a whole lot of volume. It did increase a little, uh, but there's not a ton of volume. And that gives the buyers some sentiment to believe that it could continue a bit further. Right? And then we go into the lunchtime session. So maybe they try to hold into a lunchtime swing. Uh, but then we start going, looks like sideways. Not, not really much else happened as we go into the lunchtime. But you can see, where did the volume come in? Right? Where did they finally get that bump in volume? Bing, 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 bing. Right on the moving average. They finally dipped back. It just took them so long to figure out where that support was. And now, chances are, we're trying to break out above the wedge high and drive back up to the highs. It looks like a good start right now, actually. Uh, so the S&P creating some very interesting movement today. And it's a great example of sometimes how long it can take to get that confirmation. In this case, we got a double bottom. Nobody's sure. We're not going up. It's not breaking down. And then, wham, all of that volume comes in. They defend it again again, defend it again, and now it's off to the races. So very interesting day today for sure, uh, but that's going to do it. Hopefully you find it useful, interesting, entertaining, something you can add to your tool belt. As always, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email, jhb at ssftg.com. Have a great one, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.